Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Please join me. Almighty God, keep your whole hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Pray. O oh God, whose blessed Son became poor, that we, through his poverty, might be rich, deliver us from an inordinate love of this world, that we, inspired by the devotion of your servant Claire, may serve you with singleness of heart and attain to the riches of the age to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Who is the beloved? In this reading from the Song of Solomon. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, and the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom, they give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Here ends the reading. Will you turn to page 670? Verses 1 through 8, I'll begin and read to the asterisk if you'll finish the stanza. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh thanks for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live. And lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness. And I am not praise to you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed. And meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper. And under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. A reading from 1 Peter. Since before Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same intention. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has finished with sin, so as to live for the rest of your earthly life, no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. The word of the Lord. God, 
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <coughs> I was so inspired by last week's message and the way that Linda delivered it that I told myself I was going to do the same thing. So I did. And it took over an hour and a quarter. So I decided to turn back to reading <laughs> instead of talking to you today. It is a hazard, this trip. <laughs> Saints, our lives lead us to God. They either shame us for ignoring the road signs or inspiring us by pointing the way. Oh, I'm full of it today. Watch out. <laughs> the woman who came to be known as St. Clara of Assisi was beautiful inside and out. Born in 1194 in, of course, Assisi, Italy. She came from old money that looked for opportunities to align itself with others and make more. Dad would choose the husband for his daughters. They would obey Dad, who had lucked out when he married Mom. As a happy child, Claire hid portions of her food from her plate for the helper's children, and she played with those who were always hungry. She wasn't scolding for holding back. Her mother taught Claire and her sisters to share with each other and others at the beginning of their lives. Giving was ingrained in them. When Clara was 18, she heard Francis of Assisi preach and fell in love with his ideas about God and the right behavior of man. After hearing him, she thought she could live a life like Jesus with few or no possessions. In poverty, someone would say, Poverty suggests hardships and denials. Certainly there were plenty of those. But above all that, she and Francis, who was 12 years older than Claire, shared an abiding love of God and their fellow man. She found <laughs> her own beliefs articulated Sermons. Again, her dad wanted her to strengthen the family standing in the community and for her to have a life of privilege and comfort. He had several bows in mind for her. She and Francis, though, began to meet regularly in the forest of Assisi. 
They believed in God and came to believe in each other. The two of them saw a chance to give to others in a way Clara hadn't thought possible. Francis went to his bishop for help, and he granted permission for Clara to become a postulate without her father's approval. Someone shared the situation with Dad, who promptly had a hissy and used his forbidding voice. So any action would have to be behind his back. No two accounts of his real remonstrance agree. Most do agree that Clara's escape was after church on Palm Sunday in 1212. And most agree that Clara, with the help of her aunt, went to Francis in the forest. He cut off all her hair and dressed her in a postulant's robe, one of those brown, scratchy things with funny arms, and a veil to hide her head. And he officially blessed her as a postulant. Dad was said by some to have arrived shortly thereafter, had a fit, and left angry and dismayed. One thing for us to remember along with this is that Francis still carried that taint of being a playboy in his early life. She was accepted by a nearby group of nuns and became one of them. Claire flourished and soon founded her own order based on Francis's tenets, charity, and humility. Her mother's, her mother, her sisters, and her aunt, the one that misdirected dad, all joined her in the nunnery. Francis based his thinking on the gospel from Matthew. Freely have you received, freely give. Do not possess gold, not two coats, nor shoes, not a staff. Behold, I send you a sheep in the midst of wolves. That was sort of a Franciscan attitude. Franciscan communities were forbidden to own any property or worldly goods. Part of it is spent following with your paper. In a very short time, Claire became abbess of her own order and was known for the rigors of her own penance. She walked the talk. She often fasted so drastically that she became ill. Recurrently during the 40 days of Lent, she is said to have taken only bread and water she and her women slept on beds fashioned from twigs and hemp and went barefoot at all times. They begged for food and never ate meat and refrained from an unnecessary speech. Holy silence. Her hoarder had no assets or land. Clara is thought to be the first woman in history to write her own rule or guidelines for the religious side life of the order that she formed herself. A document that ironically was not ratified by the Vatican until the day she died. Clara was said to have constructed a small hut or Francis, when he became blind and ill, and she cared for him when he could no longer care for himself. 
sacrifice seasoned with compassion, love. She just did it, and she had, of course, not sought anyone's permission to do it. In 1234, San Damiano's walls in which she lived did not keep out attacking soldiers. The nuns were quartered within that seized town. Claire was ill and in bed, but she prayed for the town and went to the window with a ciborium. Now everybody knows what a ciborium is, not me. This is where you keep the extra wafers that have already been blessed, right? And she held it up in the window, and the light struck it. And then <laughs> fell back. So that was one way, one miracle that she performed. A few weeks later, she and the other sisters repelled another attack by prayer. Words from <clears throat> She was respected, even revered, and those two miracles put her in running for her sainthood. I don't think she did it for that, but anyway. A sidebar. <clears throat> because she was known for her ability to multitask, she became the patron saint of embroiderers, goldsmiths, gold workers, and laundry workers. Late in life, when she was too ill to attend church, images and sounds of the mass appeared on the walls of her room. When she was in church. In 1957, the Pope named her the patron saint of television <laughs> and television writers and the patroness of new inventions. We got that wall. So. <laughs> I thought you would. Claire herself led prayers for 40 years. She shared, it was her nature. She gave, that was her nature. She sacrificed, she inspired. She loved God and people and life. Might we? Prayers of the people are on page 392, form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all our people in our daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. 
for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Paula, our bishop elect, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this con congregation, especially for Kathy Ellsbury, who's having surgery today. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace to you. I unmuted. Peace, Dave. Peace, Peace. 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 Walk in love, my friends, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice. Many went on the windowsill. I'm so accustomed to the large ones. <laughs> <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because in the obedience of your saints, you have given to us an example of righteousness and in their eternal joy, a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin, evil, and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Let us pray together in thanksgiving. Eternal, Eternal God, God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be with you now and all your days. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.